Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. As I talk with you about you having proper and appropriate responses to those strongly narcissistic people in your life, there's one strong truth that I'm hoping you can consistently hold on to, and that is before you ever even showed up in that narcissist's life, that person already had an idea of the role that you're supposed to play for them. Uh, they already have it in their mind that that, uh, that they are the important person in the room and there are certain things that you're supposed to do. And so when you show up, it's like over time, they're going to remind you, here's what you need to do, A, B, C, and D. And perhaps one of the easiest ways to depict how this plays out is to think of it as uh, the, the narcissist as having a, a script like for a play or a movie. And in their script that they have, they have one person who is the main character and they're the protagonist and that's the one who gets to be the star of the show. And so the narcissist says, yeah, in my script, I'm the one who has all of the worth. I'm the one who has all of the, the good things happen and all of the rest of you people out there, when you show up, I'm going to assign to you the role of, uh, let's say you may be my scapegoat. I may make you my golden child. You may become a flying monkey. Hope I can do that one. Or maybe you'll play the role of the enabler, or you're going to be part of my adoring public, or you're going to be a prop for me or a foil or someone that I can use for something. But make no mistake, it's like they've got that script. And there's one overarching theme that uh, is consistent inside that script. And that simply is, to the narcissist, I'm the one who has all of the good lines. I'm the one who gets to win in the end. I matter, you don't. You're going to come in a distant second. I'm the smartest person in this script. I'm the one in this script who has the best opinions. I'm the one who needs to be in control. I'm the one who's superior. I'm the, I'm the one that other people are probably going to uh, wind up envying. And then you, uh, uh, you can see that it has lots of implications for you in the exact opposite of all of that. Uh, because if they're the one who gets to do all of the, have all of the, uh, the kudos and all of the wonderful lines in that script, you might think, well, what about me? And by definition, it's like, well, somebody has to be on the, uh, the villain side of, in this script, and that's going to be you. And you'll, you might say, well, I don't like that. So they may come along and say, well, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll be nice to you and you get to have some good lines and good experiences. But then as long as you stay with that overarching theme, the overarching theme being I have worth and yours is much less than mine. And you can see that as narcissists approach you, approaches you, like I say, as if it's a script and the role is established for you, uh, it really does show that there's quite a bit of pathology that they have written into their way of doing things. And uh, when they elevate themselves and then they remind you, you have to stay in the unworthy role. In their mind, you see, by you being an unworthy person, it denigrates you, but it exaggerates and amplifies the necessity of who they are. That's pretty illogical. But to, to illustrate uh, how you can see that this is, in fact, the truth, this is how they actually operate, I want you to think how they say in, inside that script. For example, when you're around that person, this is going to be someone who offers you plenty of criticism. I have worth. You do not have worth. These are people who offer lots of unsolicited advice. You need me to set you straight because you don't get it. These are individuals who will consistently invalidate whatever opinions you have or preferences that don't line up with what their script says is supposed to be. 
These people uh, are totally unwilling to truly consider your needs or your feelings. In other words, that low empathy. They're the ones who have to require, or who require special treatment from you. And then if you don't do things according to what their lines and script says uh, you're supposed to do, they'll go straight into an, uh, the anger mode. Haven't you figured it out? You, you're not doing what I say you're supposed to do. I have it all scripted out right here. And they'll rage or they'll hold you in contempt. They'll be passive aggressive toward you when you don't do exactly what they want. They can be punitive whenever you uh, choose not to go along with whatever their requirements are. And so they want to continually remind you. The script says, I'm the worthy one. And by definition, you're not because we don't have room for anyone else to be worthy except for me. Now, as a therapist, uh, I guess you can say I've got different kinds of ways to describe my role. And when, when I hear about something like this, uh, I take on the role of copy editor. And let's bring that script in and let's take a look at what's, uh, what's on it. And we may need to go back and do some editing on this. Um, because you see, the narcissist script is fiction. Okay, hold on to that. Uh, because in the narcissist script, all they want is they, they want to be entitled. They want to be the self-centered author. And I'm wondering if we can uh, look at uh, what that script might be. If we were to write out that requirement, that assignment to you that says, and you're the unworthy one. And instead, I'm wondering if we can uh, do some copy editing and remind, remind you and anybody else that needs to know that it, the role that you're going to take on is the role of the worthy person. Do you see yourself as a person of worth? Because you see, when you have these messages that these narcissists come to you at, uh, come to you with, it says you're unworthy, you're unworthy, I'm the only one that matters, you don't. Ultimately, it has an erosive effect on you. Your, your sense of well-being, your uh, self-esteem uh, goes straight into the ditch. And we need to make sure that you go back and remind yourself what a healthy life script would look like uh, based on just accuracy. For example, one of the things that we're going to write into your uh, do in, in our copy editing is we're going to say, your worth is not something that's just assigned to you by somebody who's high and over you. Your worth is built into your very existence. Uh, it rises, your worth rises above achievements or status symbols or your grades or your looks or who you're connected to. Worth is something that, uh, that is ascribed to you simply because you are. I hope you hear that. And then we're going to say, based on that, uh, your worth continues to exist even when you make mistakes. Your worth continues to exist even when you miscalculate or you stumble or perhaps you've even embarrassed yourself. As a worthy person, perfection is not your goal. As a worthy person, growth is your goal. You get to ask the question, what do my successes and my failures teach me? What do my moments of clarity and my moments of confusion teach me? And as long as we're thinking in those direction, uh, in that direction, as a worthy person, you can understand your emotions as being instructive too. When you have joy, when you have sorrow, what does that say? When you have con uh, contentment or peace, or when you have fear, when you have anger, when you have fear, what is the meaning of all of that? And what do your emotions uh, say? And you can be a learner. A worthy individual uh, says, I, I'm, I'm constantly wanting to upgrade who I am and I'm wanting to think about what matters most. I'm going to think about those things. And then as a worthy person, you get to stand up for yourself. But you see, standing up for yourself is not a right or is more than that. It's more than a responsibility. As a worthy person, standing up for yourself is a privilege. I get to stand firmly and say on, on my own behalf, uh, I deserve good things, and I want to live into decency. And then, as other individuals like that narcissist come along and say, but I need to control you. As that worthy individual, you'll remind yourself, 
But you see, I'm a free agent. I'm connected to other individuals, but ultimately I get to determine who I'm going to be. And hopefully a part of your determinations will be uh, guided by conscientiousness, dignity, respect, and civility, all of that. And then if other individuals illustrate that they just don't understand you very well, as another, as a worthy person, you remind yourself their lack of understanding me is a commentary about who they are, not about who I am as they want me to think. Being different means that you're distinct. Being different means that you are an original. That's what we're talking about when you say, I'm a worthy person. Now, the narcissist can, can repeatedly come back to you and, and say, but I have my script right here, and here's your role right here, and you're supposed to be the, the role of the unworthy, flunky, the one that I get to pour all of my pathology into. Come on, do what you're supposed to do. And I'm hoping as that happens, you might remind yourself, I never signed up for that role. I, I'm not uh, going to go along with your script because you see, I have an entirely different script that's entitled The One Who Has Worth. I hope that you can live into that and when they come at you with their false uh, narratives that you're supposed to buy into, it's like, that's where you are. Uh, I, I'm not going along with that. That's fiction. Now, I hope that a video such as this can give you some good awareness and good things to think about with respect to who you truly are as compared to what they want you to think. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. We're going to keep more videos coming toward you. And in doing so, I hope the cumulative effect can be uh, very educational and part of your growth. Uh, if you have a need for therapy and you know that I've been sponsored for years by the people at betterhelp.com, I, I just, I'm a believer in that. Sometimes you, you have all these, like I say, that erosive effect. Uh, and sometimes you need somebody that can help you unpack that. Uh, below, we have a, a link to our uh, sponsor, the people at betterhelp.com. There's a whole team of licensed professional therapists that can assist you. They have a few things for you to fill out. It's affordable. It's accessible. You can just jump right into it. It's online. And so it can be very effective as well. And then in addition to that, you know that I have my, uh, my courses. It's like signing up for an online class. They're, uh, they're very extensive. Each course has at least 25 videos, written documentation and guided questions along with each video. Uh, and uh, we have the, the video that's called uh, Ready, Set, Connect about how to have healthy connections. This is me about establishing your boundaries, free to be, finding yourself despite those controllers. I have my webinars. We have our website that has uh, many articles. It has access to our podcast and um, my books, plenty of resources. So uh, that person who comes at you and their narcissism that says, well, I'm the writer of the script and I'm going to superimpose it onto you. Let's just understand that's where you are. Like I say, I have something very separate over here that I'm accomplishing in my life and I'm going to stay committed to it because in the, in the process, I'm hoping that in your script, it says, I want to be that person of dignity, respect, and civility. And then ultimately I'm wanting that to take me to my place of peace. That's my script.